Hey. Hi, everyone. Can you all hear me all right? Yeah? Okay. Um, I am Montana, and I'm a senior. <laughs> uh, I go to Buchanan High School. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I run track and field. I've been going to Cross City since I was basically born. Um, I think that's about it about me, or at least uh, I know most of you guys here. So, um, let's just get right into it. So I'm going to go into a little bit of a little story to kind of just help guide my message. Um, so I go to Buchanan now, but before I went to Buchanan, I went to a school called Sierra. See, yeah. <laughs> Sierra was a really small school, guys. Like, y'all don't understand. There's 400 people in the entire high school. Buchanan has, what, 2600s? What Billy said. Uh, a lot of people. A lot more people. So when I went to Sierra, I was put into this class called Sports PE. And in Sports PE, uh, it was just a bunch of sports combined. And it was just a bunch of athletes, and they'd give us workouts, right? So... I was the only freshman in that class. So most of them were juniors and seniors. There was maybe a few sophomores. And um, I played soccer at the time. So I hung out with one of the senior girls that played soccer. So when I was in that class, uh, because she was my friend, I decided to hang out with this, these seniors. And these seniors, they were not like me at all. I was raised in church. I had a huge faith. I was just... I, I followed Jesus like all my heart and all my soul. But these people, they were kind of the opposite. They were, I guess you could say, that I, they were big partiers, but they were just also really mean people. They would make fun of people and they would just curse and they did a lot of things that nobody should ever do. And so when I was hanging out with these people, I kind of started to act more and more like them because I didn't want to be the odd one out, right? So when we're in... When we're hanging out with people, we try to adapt our personalities a little bit to kind of be like them because we don't want to be that odd one out. We don't want to be, we kind of just want to be like everyone else. We don't want to be lonely and we don't want to be different. That's just human instinct. So when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about kind of my story in my life. I was like, how can I make a message out of this? How am I going to be able to communicate with everyone? So I was thinking about this story and I thought, okay, it's hard when we're hanging out with people who aren't like us and when we try and be like them, how can I turn this into a message? So I asked myself this question. I asked myself, what does it look like to be your authentic self in different environments? Or what does it look like to be who God calls you to be or to be God's disciple? So I thought about that question and I kind of just did some deep, uh, digging in the Bible. And what I really found is that when you're in the wrong environment or you're hanging out with people who are quote unquote bad, you end up making bad decisions. Wrong environment equals bad decisions. So not everyone does that, but I feel like that's pretty much the normal. When you go out and when you hang out with people, you kind of just, you want to, you don't want to be the odd one out. You want to be like them, right? So one thing that I found was in, well, God doesn't exactly say word for word to be your authentic self, but he does say this. In Ephesians 4, 1 through 6, he says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope where you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. So when I found this verse, I kind of thought, okay, how do I tie this in? Because I this verse really spoke to me. So in this, God, us, God calls us to be humble, and he calls us to be gentle in the presence of others. So when we're called to be humble and gentle in the presence of others, it what does it look like? It looks like, well, being humble is not thinking of yourself less. 
it's not putting yourself down. It's thinking of yourself less and others more, putting others above yourself. And so how do we do that when we're in situations where people are kind of just being rude? Well, when I was in this situation, they bullied people like a lot. Like if someone was wearing something, well, Sierra, it's a hick town, guys. We all wear boots. We all wear our buckles. We all wear boot cut jeans. Like this is a hick, hick town. Someone was wearing Air Forces, I guess. And so when they were wearing Air Forces, they were like, what in the heck are they wearing? And they were just making fun of them and they were just putting them down. And so one thing that you could do in that type of situation is just walk away or go up to that person and just comfort them because they were being really mean, right? And so to be gentle, basically it just means to be kind. To be kind, that's the best thing you can do. And another thing that God calls us to do in this verse specifically, he says he calls us to love one another. And so y'all might be thinking, are you crazy? You want me to love these people, these people who are bad? And yeah, I want you to love them because that's what God calls us to do. God calls us to love one another. That's one of his first commandments. We have to love one another as he has loved us. And so when I say love, I don't mean y'all have to go up and go hug them and give them a kiss. No, <laughs> ew. Uh, <laughs> when I say that, I just mean you need to show them respect and kindness that God has shown you. Show them the love of God because that's what we should do. We should just show people the love of God so we can bring people to Christ. And um, God gives us another example. So in Romans 12, 9 through 10, it says, love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. So he kind of explains what love is in this type of situation. He says it has to be sincere. So when you're loving other people or you're showing kindness or you're just giving them compliments, you have to be sincere about it. Don't just be like, oh my gosh, I love your outfit. And then turn around and be like, Ugh. you don't want to do that. You kind of, you need to be sincere about it. <laughs> um, and this is kind of a prime example of how you should treat these people because we should treat them as equals and we have to love them because we're all sinners. I sin, you guys sin. Raise your hand if you sin. Yeah, every one of us sins, right? So because we all sin, we're equal. In God's eyes, we're all equal. If you murder someone and you lie, you guys are equal. I'm not saying you should murder anyone, but I'm just saying. Um, so we're equal. And because we're equal, we have to love one another. We have to show them the love of God, especially those people who are not like us, who are not exactly the most Christian or aren't exactly the kindest or don't like don't act like uh, people of the Christian faith. Um, so now you guys might be thinking, I've just given you a bunch of examples about how how do, you, how do we fit this into our lives? So there's two things I thought of. First, you gotta pray. And then second, you're gonna act on that prayer. So when you pray, you're gonna go to God. And my favorite thing to do when I pray, especially when I really just wanna get like deep down is I get on my knees. I get down on my knees in my room and I just pray. And be, when I get on my knees, I feel like I'm surrendering to God. I feel like I'm just giving everything to him when I'm down on my knees. So I'm not saying you guys have to get down on your knees, just pray. So like, God, help me to be better in situations where I'm with people who aren't the best, who are kind, who curse, who probably don't do the best things. So you just ask God to give you the strength to be your best self, to be your authentic self, and to be who he calls you to be. And that's all we can really do. And when we pray to God, God's going to listen to us, and eventually he's going to answer that prayer. He's going to give you situations where you're going to learn how to grow and learn how to be a better person in these situations. And by you being a better person, you're setting an example for them. You're showing these people, I can be above you guys and I can show you that my God is, I'm following who my God wants me to be. Right? Um, and so the second thing, act on that prayer. When you act on that prayer, you have to choose to be better. You have to choose to be your best self. You have to choose to be who God calls you to be. 
It's a choice and it's a commitment. So when you're in these situations, you have to choose to not be like them. You have to choose to not conform. You have to choose to sacrifice your wants and you have to choose to sacrifice that urge and that temptation to be like everyone else. Because as humans, we want to fit in and we want to be like everyone else, right? So um, the reason that I came up with this whole thing was because... I thought a long time ago, it was really hard for me to be my authentic self. It was really hard for me to be who God called me to be. And so my therapist once told me that it was a choice to be my authentic self. And um, and she told me that no one else can do it except for me. I had to choose myself. And so I still have a list that she wrote down for me because when I was in one of her sessions, she said, how are you going to be your authentic self? What are, what are those values and what does it look like? So this was about three years ago. I still have the paper and I still look at it today because I know this is who I want to be and this is my best version of myself. And every single day in every situation that I'm in, I always try to be this person. So I'm just going to read it to you real quick. So at the top, it says authentic self. And then it says values. I want it to be, I want to be compassionate. I want to be selfless. I want to be genuine. I want to be real. I want to be optimistic. I want to be happy. I want to be kind to others. I want to show others the love that God has shown me day after day. And I want to be humble. And so on the other side, it says, what does this look like? And I wanted to just give you guys these examples, not saying that you have to use them, but it's just, it's just a little bit of a guide, right? So to be compassionate and selfless, I said, it would be like asking questions and checking in. And so in my senior girls group, we have this saying where all of us keep each other accountable and we tell each other, we text each other at night. We're like, hey, have you read your Bible today? And then if they say no, we're like, okay, make sure and read your Bible. Oh, what was it about? What chapter did you read? And so because of that, we keep each other accountable. And that is choosing to be selfless because we're putting our efforts into someone else. And so the other thing I said was observing. So to be less uh, focused on myself. Um, and I said, I wanted to be honest with all things. So just be honest. And I said, complimenting others and calling out the good stuff that they're doing. And I said that in being humble because I, sometimes we get caught up in ourselves when we think so much about ourselves. And for me to be my authentic self, I need to think about others more and less about myself. Um, and... Uh, pointing out how they're doing good in life. And so those are just kind of things that I kept for me. And if y'all want to use them, go for it. Um, so I just ask again, what does it look like to be your authentic self or who God calls you to be? And so really what that looks like, it looks like love. It looks like gentleness. It looks like patience. And it looks like being humble. And I, I put in patience in there because in Ephesians, it also said patience. But for me, I really struggle with being patient, especially when I'm hanging out with people or when I'm with a group of people who aren't exactly following the ways that I'm following. Because sometimes they say some other things and I'm like, no way you just said that right now. And we have to be patient with them because not everyone is going to be like us. Not everybody's going to follow the ways of God, right? And I especially have to be patient with my little brother, Trace. If y'all know my little brother, Trace, I don't know if he's up here. <laughs> he's wild. He's really wild. And he tests, he tests me. And to be my authentic self and to be who God calls me to be, I need patience with that child. Um, <laughs> so, and love, Again, just showing the love of God because everybody needs to experience the love of God because that's the greatest thing in the entire world, especially if you've experienced like firsthand. And gentleness, that's pretty simple. Just be gentle towards others. And lastly, it has to be a choice. It has to be a commitment. You guys have to choose to be your best self. You have to choose to be your authentic self because if you don't choose to be your authentic self every day, then you're going to end up being like everyone else. And that's not who God calls us to be. God calls us to be different. And he even said, Jesus 
said that the world hated him first. So if you're being different, you're being like Jesus, which is a great thing. Um, so you have to choose. It has to be commitment. And so I could just give examples all day long. Um, but if you don't choose to be that person, if you don't choose to change then it's just never going to work. You're just going to be like everyone else. And that's something that we shouldn't be. So it's up to you guys. If you want to be your authentic self and who God calls you to be, you have to choose, you have to sacrifice, and you have to make a commitment in your life. And that's what I'm going to leave you guys with. I'm going to pray us out, and then I'm going to have a couple of questions for us up on the screen. And I hope you all have a good day. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us. I am so thankful that I get to be up on this stage and I'm talking with everyone here. I am so thankful for these opportunities. I pray that when all these people go in and answer these questions, that they can just be free and speak freely with their groups. I pray that they can be comfortable enough to just let it all out, God. Um, I am so thankful for everyone in here. I just pray that you continue to work through their lives and just show them your love, God. And I pray that they can show others your love as well. I pray these things in your name. Amen. Thank you, guys.